Here's how I built my valve seal vacuum tester. So here are the things you need. Obviously you'll need a vacuum gauge, one that goes up to 30 inches of mercury is ideal. I'm actually running something called a compound gauge, which goes up to 30 inches of mercury of vacuum, but also goes up to 60 PSI. You'll need yourself an air truck with threads on both ends. So this end is a typical 1 4th MPT air fitting, but this side was not. So this is what was in there. I took it out and then I took a 1 4th MPT T fitting and I just sent it in there. So this side is male, this side is female, and this side is female. Now obviously, your vacuum gauge needs to be before the lever. Now this side is 1 4th MPT, so I just thread it on an air truck. So now this makes it really easy to swap to any plate or any size I want really quickly. In my life, I will build more than one engine and I will also test more than one thing. So I wanted to build a one-handed versatile vacuum gauge that does vacuum and PSI and interchangeable to any size I need. Now I got this vacuum plate kit pre-made off of Amazon for 100 bucks, but you could build this much, much cheaper. Just get yourself something thick enough that you could tap for 1 4th MPT and then put some foam on the other side with a hole in it. Now for me, I do have a big old air compressor, which is then running over to a regulator, which I have set to about 60 PSI. And then it comes down here. And this is the Venturi vacuum pump. You can pick this up dirt cheap from Harbor Freight for about 15 bucks. So this side is 1 4th MPT, so just put your air fitting on it and it will come into here. Now this side was not 1 4th MPT, this side was 1 4th SAE. Now I searched high and low for a 1 4th SAE female fitting to a 1 4th MPT male fitting, but I had no luck, so this is what I did. So since this vacuum pump is super cheap, what I did is I just used thread tape. So I put some thread tape on it on the 1 4th SAE male end and I threaded on a 1 4th MPT female air fitting. And we'll hook up the line that goes to the vacuum pump. As you can hear, it's starting to suck. I have this line hooked up that's going to my chuck. Now before you hook the air source to the chuck, make sure you have one of the plates in opening the valve. Otherwise, you will pull full vacuum on this and ruin the gauge. Ask me how I know. So go ahead, hook it up. Test on my finger, you can see it starting to suck down. We'll go ahead, give it a crack. There we go, as you can see, we're sucking down to almost 24 inches of mercury. Yep, right there, 24 inches. Now I'll go ahead and let go of the lever and just lightly hold it here. And you can see how long it's taking for it to bleed down. It's not perfect, but this is indicating it's got a pretty good seal. I already have my cams installed, so I can't show you across all ports, but essentially when you're lapping your valves, you can do this without valve springs installed as well, just the gravity of the valve itself. Now, after I built this, I checked out some other people's DIY valve seat testers. And to be honest, this one seems more versatile than all of them. Some people do use a vacuum pump instead. And what they did is they just used hose clamps to pretty much get this to the vacuum pump and from this to this plate. So with mine, since it's super easily interchangeable, that's why I'm pretty stoked on this thing. Now, if this video helped you out coming up for your next engine build, do me a favor, drop a like on the video, drop a comment down below what you think, and subscribe and follow along for future videos. Y'all have a good one now. Peace out.